And we're back. Another day. Another civic day. Is that a back-to-back video? That just shows you how excited I am about this car. Uh, anyway, so not doing anything major today. Um, we're going to kind of reserve all that for this weekend because I have a lot more free time and I can utilize the entire day. Uh, but today what I want to do is we need to pull this valve cover. This guy right here. Uh, for two different reasons. Number one, I just kind of want to know what's going on inside there. And number two, can't check the wall. <laughs> the dipstick, uh, the bottom part of the dipstick uh, plastic broke off, I guess, and it's kind of stuck in there. Uh, so, yeah, that's what our goal is today. Yeah, just pull it off, see what's going on. Uh, right now, I also have the uh, drain plug undone. I'm just letting it drain out a little bit more because I did order an oil pan. I thought I had a spare one here, but I don't. Uh, so, drop the oil pan this weekend, hopefully. Um, and then while we're also down in there, we have to put a bong in for the return off the turbo, um, which come to find out it all makes sense now uh so they ran that oil pan still because they already had the bone loaded in um i have a spare one right here this is a bolt-on style so you drill a hole it's got two uh like crush washers in there uh tighten them up spoon what are you doing that's my cat her name's spoon <laughs> but anyway um yeah, we're gonna put this in with the um, the base model RSX or EP3 oil pan, same motors. But uh, yeah, so that's about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get all the tools I think that are necessary. All right, so we're gonna try out the 60 frames per second on this camera and see how it comes out. Um, pulling these valve covers off isn't all that hard. It is a little bit more, um, a bit more difficult than like a B or a D or an F or an H series just because you have coil packs and like you have the wiring harness that runs over it, but, uh, and some other stuff attached to the valve cover itself. Other than that, it's not too difficult. So what I'm gonna do is uh, just start unzipping tens. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tens that hold down the valve cover uh, along with the coil packs. And then I have to undo this hose right here, this bracket right here that holds whatever this guy is. And, um, Looks like this fuel line is also attached right here, but I think that's also a part of this bracket. So we should just be able to unbolt everything and we should be all right. So I'm just gonna skip to it real quick. All right, so as you can see, I got the valve cover off, and to be honest with you, it looks very, very nice in here. Wow. Oh, let's see what's going on here. So, cams look stock, um, but I'm curious about the valve train, actually. If I compare it to the valve train I have, it's 2000. I think these might be aftermarket. I just can't tell exactly what they are. I don't see any part number markings or anything like that but still and to confirm you know rbc cam gear right there 100 you know, of k20z3 head it looks like if i had to take the gander here it probably stretched the timing chain and then they um drop the valve which is really common on these motors, uh, you know, especially given the mileage on the chassis itself, uh, if it didn't, if it was never maintained properly, that happens. That's actually how I got my last uh, Z3 engine. It's because of that same thing. And the bottom end wasn't any good, but the head was still in great condition. So I went ahead and dropped on that bad boy all the way back there some more. But yeah, like I said, cam gears look, or cams look stock. Valve terrain looks aftermarket. I just can't tell what exactly it is. I could be wrong though, um, but. I would, I would bet that this had some minor head work done to it. So that's good to know. That's great to know. Uh, that puts us in a really, really good spot in terms of um, how this was done. So when I drop the oil pan, which won't be in this video, because I just don't have the daylight, and you have to drop the subframe a little bit to get the oil pan out uh, because the bolts on the uh, passenger side of the car sit a little like I mean, you have about this much space to get anything in there and it's damn near impossible uh, I want to know if maybe they did something to the bottom end but while we're in here it's always a good idea to check your plugs all 
Okay, okay, okay. Let's just let's just go over here to the CRV table. Can y'all guess what plugs these people were running? Just take just take a gander. Just take a gander. You know, no, it's not a plug that makes sense. You know, it's not like you know maybe some Denzos or some NGKs like the quintessential Honda plugs. Nah, nah. The best I can do. Fucking auto lights. Don't ever, 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 ever in your life run these trash plugs in any boosted application. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care if they came out the factory with auto lights on a boosted application. Pull them out, put some fucking NGKs in there. Please. So let's see. Auto light XP. So XP, if I'm not mistaken, does mean that they're iridiums. And uh, for a turbo car, that is a, I'm sorry, that is a big gap. Now, I'm not really familiar with the gap of the K-Series cars when it comes to boost. But if I had to take a guess, it'd be a little tighter than that. Let's get a, uh, I should have one running around here somewhere, actually. Let's check that gap. Yeah, there it is. Boom. Let's see what we got here. All right, so, boom, plug right here. Let us see. On the Integra, I run them down to 0 .20. Um, I'm on E85, under boost, 24 PSI. On this guy, they are, boop, 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 let's keep going, let's keep going. Uh, 42,000, that is factory. 42,000. Uh, don't, 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 just don't, please don't, please don't. If you want your stuff to run and last and run reliably, reliably, reliably do not run NGKs. <laughs> don't run champions, run NGKs. Oh my goodness, yeah, don't, don't do that to yourself. It, it, mm, we are better than this. Auto lights are the worst plugs ever. Does say champions too, man. I'm getting my plugs all sorts of messed up, ain't I? Obviously, those are not going back in. I'm gonna get a hold of my tuner and see what he recommends for this setup. Um, and with these RC injectors, I still have yet to run a part number on these to see what they actually are. But uh, yeah. Anyway, I guess we can go back to what we were originally doing, and that was fixing this. So, as you can see, this little plastic piece right here is like stuck. Like it won't come back up no matter what you do so um, instead of fighting with it i'm just going to cut it down low pull it out and then we're going to go run over here we'll put this one in there she took a little bit of talking to but we got her out go ahead and uh toss this in the trash but anyway now that we know that um, the spark plugs were not any good, we're gonna order some new ones. Um, I gotta figure out if I'm gonna uh, take it down just one step or multiple steps, but given what this car is, it'd probably be all right with just like a, a seven. What is the, what are these? Let's see here. Not that I know auto light part numbers by heart or anything. I just know that they're XP, so they should be iridiums, but 5224. Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, given where they're gapped out to, they're probably just a standard spark plug you'd get from a K-Series. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. But since I'm so curious about the valve train on this car, I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pop the valve cover off of this uh, engine right here and just do a minor comparison. And then maybe some of you guys in the comments who have more experience with the K-Series stuff than I do can tell me, you know, what the hell is going on in here. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll shout you out. I will send you a one dollar bill <laughs> i am poor but yeah what are these they gotta be something also is it head studded it looks like it's head studded they at least do that can't tell but it looks like there is, is that a head stud down there yep 100 those are head studs right down in here in between uh what is it cylinder two and three i can see you guys can't really see it and my fat fingers in the way but yeah it's got head studs in it so apparently they built it to do something i am so curious on what's going on on this bottom end um i pulled the valve cover off of my k20 slash k24 setup now this is a uh 2000 this is 2009 fa5 k20 z3 head i pulled this off of actually this guy right here <laughs> this guy right here you can see Mr. Rodney and Mr. Piston weren't, they didn't have a, a nice time. But um, this head ended up dropping 
a valve and we pulled the valve out we inspected it and uh, cleaned it up real good had it tested everything straight so i was like cool i'll just put you know a new valve in it and some rock or some springs and blah 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 all these retainers are completely different this is what i was thinking these look completely factory this is what i the few k-series heads i've been in this is what they always look like uh compared to that guy right there see how much different they are um these are a lot shinier um so i would put money that it has springs and retainers i just wish i knew what the brand was please somebody in the comments let me know uh if it looks familiar to you um i'd greatly appreciate it but yeah so knowing that makes me curious about the bottom end like 100 percent. but anyway um what i'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and toss this valve cover back on and we're gonna order some plugs and um yeah, that'd probably be it for this video, to be honest with you. I just wanted to, I really just needed to get the dipstick replaced, but uh, I'm glad that we took the valve cover off. And that way we know that it at least has some type of mild money put into it, which is really cool. All right, back in, I don't know where I left you guys. I had to use the bathroom, sorry. Uh, anyway, I uh, figured out Skunk 2 valve springs and retainers. That's what they are. Uh, excuse me, jeez spaghetti coming up <laughs> but anyway uh which is cool you know that's neat uh, about 300 and something dollars you know not too terrible uh so next is oh yeah i guess i'll put it back together now <laughs> oh yeah here it is i think this one's si yes it is see the red there she is go ahead and get this all cleaned up uh it's not perfect it's got a scratch right here but what's it matter good enough for who it's for and uh i guess i need to put my valve cover back on that one and the valve cover back on this one i'm not going to bore you guys with reinstalling that stuff man once the bumper's on and like everything buttoned up i have to tomorrow while i'm at work i'm gonna get a cover for the uh coil packs um you wouldn't even be able to tell that this thing was boosted until you look at the blow off valve because once you have the cow on and this guy on there's like so much going on here that you'd have to actually look look to be able to see where the turbo's at ah, i am horrible at filming look look to see where the turbo's at <laughs> but yeah i gotta get some uh miscellaneous bolts and whatnot i'm gonna keep this section quick because honestly i don't have the following to really be discussing stuff like this but as a youtube automotive youtube enthusiast um like you know i watch a lot of youtube and i have also seen this zosh brought up the fact that things are being done for like shock value or people are doing these insane bills that are not feasible for people like you and probably the people who are watching you know my channel um and if you have like the funds and the know-how to do that stuff awesome like i'm not taking anything away from you but from a consumer standpoint, I feel like automotive YouTube is out of touch with reality. Um, the people are like being bought out by huge corporations and they're funding these insane builds. And as you guys can see, these corporations don't know anything about the basic automotive enthusiasts. They just see money, uh, which sucks because at the end of the day, you're turning what used to be an amazing channel into nothing more than a cash grab channel. Um, and I hate to like, no, no, I'm not talking crap, but when you look at companies like Donut, for example, yeah, like you see all these people leaving and you're just like, well, you know, and their explanation being like they don't have the freedom that they want. Uh, their ideas aren't being, you know, taken into consideration. And these big corporations are just like, yeah, give us all your money. We need views, sell merch, give us money. That sucks. Uh, so my plan is with my channel, even though I only have like 155 followers, um, I already thought about this like a while ago i don't think no matter how big i get if i do make it big doing this stuff um which i'm not putting all my eggs in this basket by any means i actually have a really nice career that you know makes me able to own s2000s and turbo civics and turbo integras um and honda sprees <laughs> um i would i would want to stay as humble as possible the reason being is because i have found the most enjoyment out of the smaller channels being humble one of my favorite channels of all time shout out to young static and the reason i said and reason i'm shouting him out is because if he wanted to i know for a fact with his skill his knowledge man and his attention to detail on his builds 
he could be rolling in it right now. He could probably, you know, be that, you know, shock value YouTuber. But his stuff is so grounded to the point where this man is still working on his cars in his driveway on jack stands. Pulling motors with just jack stands. Not even a cherry picker. It sketches me out watching it, but just with jack stands. I love that. That's the type of stuff I like. I think the only YouTubers I follow that have like a million views or a million followers, I don't know where gears and gasoline is at. Um, I guarantee they're probably close if not already there, but they put in work on their channel and I really appreciate it. And they show the nitty gritty of everything. That's another thing a lot of YouTubers don't do. They don't show the, oh, this is how this isn't working or how this car is always broken. They just show the perfection of it. Nobody wants to see that because then you have a standard that isn't attainable for blue collar people like myself who like cars um, or just the 16 year old that is just getting into it. And all he's seeing is, oh, well, my car is going to be slow and crappy if it doesn't make a thousand horsepower and beat Hellcats. The Integra makes 450 wheel. 450 wheel, we can push it higher, but I'm open deck and I've already cracked sleep on one block. The car was more fun at 300 wheel horsepower, believe it or not, um, because it was just a lot more usable. Um, now, don't get me wrong, obviously, that's just some build quality on my part. Like, I could do tires and suspension and make it, you know, and it needs a new LSD because the factory LSD and it's just tired. But, um, it make it, you know, a lot more fun to drive on the street. But at the end of the day, it's like realizing that you don't need a bunch of power to have a fast car. Sleeper dude, uh, family wholesome builds, and it's not perfect at all. He is the guy that's like, I know this works. This is what we're going to do. And if it doesn't work, we'll try it again. That That's that's awesome. Um, Zosh, obviously, you know, love that dude. Um, I've been watching him forever. But uh, yeah, dude, just what I think people need to do is just go out and just enjoy what you have. I remember the days where it would be me and my friends and a bunch of crappy Hondas or maybe a couple 240s here or there. And if you were cool, you had a, a swapped Honda, you know. I had a couple Civics back in my teenage years that were B-swapped, and that was like the thing. Um, you were beating on four, six Mustangs, no problems. But, you know, as of late, it's like, you ain't got a thousand, what you doing? Which I kind of understand because a lot of these cars out the factory don't need anything more than a downpipe and a tune. And they're running like very low 11s and the high 10s, like the Infiniti Q50s, which I actually kind of want one. I really like those cars. Like those things are nutty. I think what, you put like $10,000 into it and you can run a high 10 on a tire. That's impressive. And still have heat, AC, you can pull your balls while you're pulling on the dude with the Honda like me. <laughs> but yeah, um, stay humble people, just stay humble and just realize that not everyone out there, and I mean, don't get me wrong, the video content may still be good, even though you're way beyond what anybody can actually do who's watching it. But just remember, like, I feel like a lot of these guys need to just, you know what? Instead of like going into our $500,000 shop that's 20,000 square feet, we're gonna put this thing on jack stands outside in the driveway and work on it. Just to remind them of where they came from, uh, because I feel like as humans, we just kind of inherently just want the, the higher we get, the less we remember from where we were at. And um, it's kind of sad. Stay humble, people. Stay humble. But anyway, that's enough of my TED talk here. Um, the oil pan for this thing should be in on Wednesday. No, today's Wednesday. The oil pan on this thing should be in on Friday. ADHD is kicking. I did not take my medicine this morning. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but it'd be in on Friday and I'll have all day Friday after work and Saturday to mess with this car. Hopefully we can have it all buttoned up. We gotta put the exhaust on it. Um, the drain from the turbo is in the way of the exhaust. So once we get um, the new oil pan, we tap it. We'll figure out where we're gonna tap it. That way we can move the drain out the way and bolt the exhaust back up because everything's already there for it. Just needs two bolts ran in and it'll be done. Um, and then after that, I think I'll register it tomorrow. So hopefully by this weekend, we'll put this thing on the street. Um, I'm not saying that we'll be able to beat on it because I just don't know what's all going on. And I'm pretty sure it's supposed to have K-Pro, but it doesn't have the K-Pro dongle in it. So I'll probably have to order one, which I have to wait a couple weeks. But um, but yeah, that's about it, guys. Uh, if you're still watched to this point, thank you so much. And please go ahead and comment down below and let me know how you feel about automotive YouTube right now. Uh, because to be honest with you, I get excited when the guys with like sub 500,000 subscribers drop. You know what I mean? Like... I think Zosh has like 311. 
Um, Sleeper Dude might be in the 300 to 400 range. I can't remember. Uh, Young Static, I know he's about what, three, 400 himself, somewhere in there. Uh, Gears and Gasoline, they have a lot of followers, but they're on a whole, they're doing a whole other thing. They're not just building thousand horsepower cars to do it. They're building track cars and putting them on the track, which is dope. And that's actually what the Integra's gonna do next year. So uh, that'll be it for this, guys. Peace.